Free Sky R9 Mini uh, firmware update. Go. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're updating the firmware on my Free Sky R9 Mini receiver. Maybe we should do it with pass through. Can we do it with pass through? Oof. Kill me. What? A, oh, what a great video that would be, but it would make me want to kill myself. Okay. I'm going to do it, but it's going to make me want to kill myself. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. A little while back, I made a video about how to update the firmware on your FreeSky receiver. And I said the easiest way to do it was to plug it into this little port right here. Like this is the x Lite uh, transmitter. The QX7 has the same thing. Or even on the Tyrannus X9D, you can use the pins in the back of the JR module bay. You plug the receiver in, you update the firmware from the radio. It's a piece of cake. But there's a problem. What if your receiver is all soldered up inside your quadcopter? You know, when I did the demonstration, I did it with the FreeSky RXSR, which has a nice little plug that you can unplug. No soldering necessary. But what if you've got a receiver like the X4R SB, the XSR, or in my case, I have the new R9 Mini. Ooh, FreeSky R9 system. It's coming. I got to update the firmware before I'm going to use it, but it's all soldered up in my quad. I don't want to desolder it. Every time I want to update the firmware, I got to desolder it. No. Today, you're going to learn the workaround, which is a thing called serial pass-through. It's mysterious, but I'm going to show you how it works. Stay tuned. Let me just start this video by listing off a couple of the reasons why you're probably here, why you want to update the firmware on your receiver. Number one, you want to try F-Port. F-Port is a cool protocol that lets you run SBUS and smart port telemetry over a single wire, and it can save you one free UART on some flight controllers. That's kind of neat. Maybe you're interested in changing your receiver's region. Like you've got the EU firmware, also known as the LBT firmware, but you want to run the FCC firmware because you've moved from Europe to the United States and no other possible reason. I know you're out there. <laughs> Or in my case, I've got the FreeSky R9 receiver, and that's such a new product. It's not that new, but it's a new enough product that there are some improvements to the firmware that you're going to want to make. You're going to want to flash the new firmware to, just as soon as you get it. The first thing you're going to want to do is flash the new firmware. So you want to flash new firmware to your receiver. And if your receiver, like the um, RXSR or like the, the bigger R9 Mini whatever they call it, the R9 Slim receiver, if it has a plug, probably the simplest thing to do is to just unplug that plug and then make a new little plug adapter and plug it straight into the bottom of one of your transmitters and flash the firmware from that. Because the what I'm about to show you is a lot of screwing around and kind of a pain in the butt, and it's not going to work for every flight controller, but it's going to be the right choice for some of you especially if your receiver is direct soldered. Because what this serial pass-through does is it turns the your flight controller basically into a programming adapter for your receiver. So all you got to do is plug the flight controller in with USB, enter a couple of commands in the command line, and then run the FreeSky firmware updating tool, and it'll do it as if it was using the FreeSky programming adapter, which you don't even need to buy. But there's a catch. And the catch is that the receiver will only be receptive to attempts to program it for a short window after it first powers up. The way it works is it's called the bootloader window. It's this bootloader it keeps coming back to haunt us, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. Uh, when you first power up one of these devices, during a brief window of time, it listens and it says, is anybody trying to write new code to me? Because if so, I'm ready for it. No. Okay, I'm going to start doing my normal operations. And once that bootloader window passes, you have to power cycle the device to, to try to upload code to it again. And that is a problem because for a lot of us, the way the flight controller works is the minute you plug in USB, the receiver powers up. And this is my flight controller here. And if you've got it powered from the 3.3 slash 5 volt pad, then it's powered from USB. And that's intended as a convenience because you, when you want to test out your receiver, you don't want to go plug in a lipo and risk you know smoke and fire and motors spinning and props. And you just want to plug into USB, bind your receiver, work out your channels, 
very convenient to have that. But it's bad for what we're trying to do because the minute you plug in the flight controller, now the receiver is powered up and the bootloader window passes and this, what I'm about to show you, will no longer work. So what you need to do in order for this to work is you need to have a flight controller that does not power the receiver from USB. Good news. If your flight controller does power the receiver from USB, it probably only, it certainly, definitely only does that on one particular 5 volt pad that is intended specifically for the receiver. So all you have to do if you want to do this is just move that one wire from the special 5 volt pad that's just for the receiver to any other 5 volt pad and now the receiver won't power up from USB and you can do what I'm about to show you. And in fact, you could just leave it that way or you could move it back when you're done. It's up to you. So let's go ahead and download the things that we're going to need in order to perform this firmware update. And the first thing that we're going to need is the FreeSky STK update tool. That's this tool here, tool-freesky update s port. It's downloadable from this URL, which is down in the video description. You can just find it down there. And I'm going to download that tool. The next thing you're going to need is the firmware for your receiver, whichever re receiver you are updating, and that you can get from this link, which is also down in the video description. So I'm doing the R9 Mini, so I'm going to click on R9 Mini, and here are the firmwares. Here's, here's the standard firmware, and here's the F-Port firmware if you want to use that. Uh, whatever you're going to download, go to the page for your receiver. You do want to pay attention. Sometimes they'll have like, you know, let's look at the RXSR. Sometimes they'll have different firmware for the LBT. That's that's people in the EU need to be flashing the LBT firmware. People anywhere else in the world and definitely the US need to be flashing the FCC firmware. So sometimes they'll have just LBT in one of the downloads. Some, but usually they'll have both FCC and LBT firmware. So I'm going to grab this firmware and I'm going to download it. And when that stuff downloads, and it must be coming from China or something, it's taking a little while to download. But when that's done downloading, I'll show you what to do next. Here we are in my downloads folder. And here are the two zip files that I just downloaded. Zip files are, are archives. Your operating system probably knows what to do with them. So if you double click them, something should happen, a window should pop up, or maybe you just, you should see the contents of the zip file. And what you wanna do is you want to click and drag all of that stuff into this. Well, I, you probably don't wanna put it right in your downloads folder. So let's just make a new folder. Free Sky Updater, and then here, we'll do this. There we go. So now we've made a new folder for the Free Sky Updater. There we go. We'll put that stuff in there. And this is the R9 mini firmware. And we'll make a new folder. I don't know. It's not strictly required. You can really put these files anywhere so long as you can find them again. All right. However you do that with your operating system and your zip file manager. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the USB port on my flight controller. Now at this point, your receiver must be powered down. If your receiver is powered up at this point, what I'm about to show you will not work. Next, we're gonna go into Betaflight. We're gonna connect and we're gonna go to the ports tab. And I wanna look down and see which UART smart port is enabled on. Smart port in my case is UART 3. Now the firmware update is gonna happen over the smart port wire between the flight controller and the receiver. So if you've got smart port working, you're good to go. If you haven't set up smart port, then you're going to need to at least run a wire between the receiver and the flight controller, and you're going to need to connect it to a UART on which smart port would work. And now we get into this whole question of inversion and inverted UARTs. And if you have an F7 or an F3, that doesn't really matter. You just need the smart port wire going to any TX pad on any UART, but if you've got an F4 flight controller, you're going to need to be using the, uh, the, the, the telemetry or smart port pad that the flight controller designer gave you. You can't just go to any UART TX pad. The easiest thing to do would be to have smart port already working before you do this so that you know for a fact that it's set up right, because otherwise when this doesn't work, you're not going to know why. And frankly, if you haven't set up smart port yet, then maybe just the easiest thing to do is to desolder the whole thing and just scrap this method, use the other method, the easier, you know, plug it into your, plug it into this guy. Anyway, moving on. 
So in my case, Smartport is on UART number three, and I'm gonna make a note of that, and then I'm gonna to go to the CLI, and I'm gonna type serial pass through, and now I'm gonna pick the UART number minus one. So I was on UART three, and I'm gonna type two. If you were on UART two, you would type one, UART six, you would type five. I'm gonna type serial pass through two, and then 57600, and that's the baud rate for those who are curious. And I should see this, port two open, baud equals 57600. At this point, the next thing I need to do is close the configurator completely, but do not power cycle the flight controller. Now I'm gonna go into the FreeSky updater and I'm gonna run the FreeSky updater software. I'm gonna select the COM port that I was connected to, which is COM3, which is where my flight controller is. And I'm gonna click file and I'm gonna go and onto the firmware folder that I made and I'm gonna pick the file for my firmware. So in this case, I'm in the US, so I'm gonna pick the FCC firmware. And now the FreeSky firmware updater is gonna start looking for the receiver. This is the point where I'm gonna plug in the battery, the XT60 on my quad. And at this point, you should see the change from looking for hardware to this firmware v12.34 hardware whatever the firmware and hardware versions are if you don't see this then something hasn't gone right and it's not working if you do see this the last thing to do is to hit the download button and it will download to your receiver the firmware do not unplug do not lose power don't move just walk away walk away until it's done and it takes a few minutes to it takes like literally three or four minutes for this to finish so just because if you interrupt this, I don't know for sure. A lot of times if you interrupt firmware update like this, you'll brick the thing. You don't want to brick your receiver. I don't know for sure that it'll brick it, but let's not take any chances. I'll see you guys in like four minutes. And just like that, uh, three or four minutes later anyway, <laughs> you're done. Now I want to tell you, this does not work for everybody, even if you follow the steps that I gave you to the letter. Um, I figured out the steps that work for me, and I did some research, and I think these steps work for other people. But if you have trouble, here are a couple other things you can try. Number one, you can try running the firmware updater with administrator permissions. Just right-click and run as administrator. That's under Windows anyway. The other thing that sometimes is necessary, and I don't know why, but sometimes you've got to do this... You got to go in to your ports tab and where you see the MSP protocol, you got to change that to 57600 instead of 115200, which is the default. You got to change that to 57600, which is the same baud rate that the receiver is going to see when it passes through. And then in order to connect, you're also going to need to change this to 57600 or you won't be able to connect. And some people need to do that before they're able to make this work. And there you go. That is how you update the firmware on your FreeSky receiver without ever taking it out of your quad. The only catch is you need to be able to power up the flight controller and put it into pass-through without powering up the receiver at the same time. Once you can do that, this, and by the way, this will work for other things too. If you need to update, if you still have an MWOSD, this same procedure works for MWOSD or anything else that you need to update using a serial interface like an FTDI adapter or whatnot, you probably can do it just using this exact process. GPS, GPS receiver, your, your KISS OSD, yeah. So I'm glad to have been able to finally, people have asked for this video and I'm glad to be able to finally bring it to you. I was so annoyed going into it but it actually turned out not to be as difficult as i expected it to be so uh, let me know how you get along with it down in the comments if you have any trouble let me know i'll do my best to help you thanks for watching happy flying